Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to this week's Q&A Fridays. As always, I'm your host, Stanley Tate, and I'm joined by our co-host, Emma Head. What's going on, Emma? Hey, everybody. All right, so what question do you have for me this week? So today, 68-year-old Sarah says, I'm stuck in my Parent PLUS loan with no way out. My husband and I owe $212,000 for our two children. I'm on Social Security and I use my first SS check of approximately $5,000 for the February payment. I made a payment in October when they restarted, but then I read that I'd have until September before non-payments were punished. Is this still correct? And then the second part of her question is saying, I've also not consolidated any of the 10 loans. I've tried several times a while ago, but I gave up as each entity told me to go to the other. What can I do to help my situation? Okay. So this is where we get into like a poor customer service experience right here, right? Because consolidating is fairly easy to do on studentaid.gov. There's a question out how someone with Parent PLUS loans should consolidate, right? Whether they should use double consolidation or they should just do a single consolidation. But the, the baseline premise of doing a consolidation, that's pretty fairly easy to do. Where my mind kind of got stuck at was trying to figure out, and this is something that people do a lot, where they they look at themselves as a financial unit because they've been together forever and that's how they treat things in their life. But with student loans, even if you made an agreement that you guys are paying them together, there's a real question of who's the legally responsible person. And so I wonder, is she the person that's responsible for the 212,000 or did they borrow each of them borrowed some money or whatnot, because that's gonna make a difference here, right? But let's just assume she borrowed the $212,000. I mean, is her only source of income Social Security? Yes, as of November, 2024. Yeah, this is an easy answer. We just need to consolidate. Like, we need to consolidate because her payment is going to be zero or near zero, depending on how they file taxes and things like that. But those are things we can work out. So because someone on Social Security, they generally don't have taxable income or the taxable income is so low that they won't have to make a payment on their student loans. So in her case, the answer is gonna lead through consolidation. And then there's a question of, should I do single consolidation or double consolidation? And since she has 10 loans, that's pretty easy to do the double consolidation. And for most people, it's gonna make sense to do that because you get into the save plan that not only offers a much lower monthly payment than income contingent repayment, but it also comes with the interest waiver and so where that comes into play at, she already owes 212,000. If she wasn't in save, her balance will grow, 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 grow. And by the time her loans are forgiven, she may owe $350,000. And that could be really emotionally defeating, right? To see that happen. But under the save plan, interest grows, but then they waive the interest. So you'll never end up owing more than what you originally consolidated in her case at 212,000. So that would probably be my most straightforward answer for her is, Dude, let's double consolidate. Let's get you into the save plan. Let's leverage your social security. Let's have a super low payment. Okay, perfect. And she's also worried about the payment on ramp and whether or not she's gonna get punished because she's still receiving letters from her servicer. And yeah. this can be really scary for people and they don't know if it's actually happening or not. So what would you say to her? Yeah, well, it's something I say to all my clients. Number one, the payment on ramp really works. So full stop. It has been in place since September of 2023. It's gonna to last to September of this year. During that time, there will be no late payments added to your credit report. But that doesn't mean that bills aren't still coming. In her case, bills are still coming. And they seem like, man, I need to pay, I need to pay, I need to pay. And that goes into our conditioning as like individuals who are like, I am a responsible person. I get a bill, I pay a bill. But in this case, you actually need to treat that situation differently and say, I can't afford to make those payments right now, so I'm gonna choose not to pay, and I have until September to not pay without any penalty. Now, backing up, I don't think she should actually wait through September. I think she should just go ahead and start the consolidation now, and she's gonna have an affordable payment. But there are instances where I have people where they know they're gonna be working in through the end of September, and their income is really high, but they know it's gonna drop down. So in their case, they are incentivized to delay paying as long as they can so they can pocket that money. And the reason why they're incentivized paying is because backing all the way up, we recognize someone on Social Security is not gonna be able to pay back $212,000. 
right? Unless some, there's other financial miracle. So you have to accept that you're not gonna pay it back, which also means you can accept not paying when there's no incentive to do so. If it's not gonna hurt your credit, it's not helping you pay down the balance any because you'll never pay it off, then what are you actually paying for other than habit? And that's a thought process I go through with clients all the time because it does break your sort of mental conditioning for things. Yeah, I get that. In this case, in Sarah's case, she should double consolidate to get on save. But what if there's somebody like Sarah who ha is stuck with a Parent PLUS loan, but they're not on Social Security, they can't get on save. What can they do to escape these Parent PLUS loans? Well, the question would be like, well, escape doesn't exist, right? Like there is an escape. Uh, there is strategies that we can put in place. So someone who can't get into save with a Parent PLUS loan is someone that only has one federal student loan. It's either gonna be a Parent PLUS loan by itself or it's gonna be a direct consolidation loan. What can they do? Well, they can go back to school and borrow another loan and then it gives them two loans and they can do the double consolidation then and get in the save. You gotta get all of that done before July, 2025, but it can be done, right? So there's that. But then the other alternative is I have a guy down in North Carolina, my guy, John, what's going on, John, how you doing? He consolidated so long ago that he's not even eligible for income contingent repayment on his direct consolidation parent plus loan. So for him, his income was still high. For the longest time, what we did was we made one payment every 90 days. And you'd be like, wait, why would you do that? Well, the way the rules work for student loans, they don't report late payments until your 90 days pass due. So his one monthly payment was really high, but if we just made one payment every three months, that kept him out of having late payments added to his credit report and still kept him current-ish on his loans. He was always 60 days past due. That's one alternative strategy. Uh, another outcome is, you know, maybe you're looking at a bankruptcy at that point because you can't afford it, right? That is the only other way. But there are a few options to get out of the loan through forgiveness for Parent PLUS loans. You're either looking at public service loan forgiveness, income driven repayment forgiveness, or your disabled forgiveness. And if you don't work for the government, you ain't gonna get that. And if you ain't disabled, you ain't gonna get that. So all that's left over is income driven repayment forgiveness, but that takes 25 years of paying under an income driven repayment plan to get there. Okay. And this is my ignorance of the system speaking, but is there any way that Sarah could transfer these Parent PLUS loans to her kids if they're willing to pay the loans? Direct answer, yes, there is a way. She could transfer the debt by allowing the kids to refinance the loans in their name, right? But that's a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea in this fact pattern because we know she will have a near zero dollar payment. Why would you shift that burden to your kids, right? I don't understand that because we're saying we can have a super low payment. There's no need to fret from that standpoint, but that kind of question, that thinking comes out of not fully understanding your options here and what the universe like looks like, what can we do? And so once you become more knowledgeable about your options, you're like, okay, this isn't so bad, but I just need to make sure I'm in the right position possible with these loans. Yeah. Okay, so Sarah's good then. Sarah has a clear Well, Sarah don't plan feel good. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but once we back away from it and say, okay, let's just look at the facts. Sarah has 10 loans or something like that you said. They're all Parent PLUS loans. She's had a difficult time consolidating. Really, we know that if she consolidates, she's gonna be in either the income contingent repayment plan or the save plan. We know that her taxable income is quite low based on what she shared. Under either one of those ICR or save plan, her payment's gonna be affordable. And both of those plans lead to loan forgiveness after a certain amount of time. So we just need to do that. We need to get her in that position instead of where she's stuck with these high monthly payments and she's feeling like there's nothing that can be done. It's taking her whole social security check. We just need to get her empowered into the right strategy is the real issue here. Great, so I hope she's watching this. And um, for the other people watching this who have Parent PLUS loans, like Sarah, but are not on Social Security and they're in a different situation, to speak to their anxiety a little bit about transferring their loans to their children, would that be possible for some people? Would it make sense in some cases? I don't know that it ever makes sense, but I think that's my own bias there about carrying the burden for your children, right? And holding on to that. My kind of preferred biased way is let's get you the payment and then let's get the children to make the payments for you. Because if you think about it, the children have to be on board with refinancing. 
they can't do it any other way, right? Like there's no way to transfer it. So if the children are on board with the refinancing, that means they're on board with paying the loans back. So then just have them take over your payments for you, right? And let's do that instead. Now, if you're dead set on refinancing the loans and getting them out your name and your children are willing to do so, cool. But just understand what you're signing them up for, which is uh, inflexible repayment options with their private student loan refinancing lender. They are not gonna have income driven repayment options. They're not gonna have forgiveness options. They are gonna have to pay that bill every single month as agreed. The only break is some type of forbearance or some type of interest rate reduction. But if they suffer job loss, they gotta come up with that money. If they have health issues, they have to come up with that money, right? So it's just a terrible situation for that child. So I, I would, I have never in a decade of doing this with the thousands of parents I've talked to have ever recommended a single parent do that. That said, I don't live your life. I don't sit across from you at your Thanksgiving dinner table. So you do what's best for you. It just wouldn't be what I would do. Okay, got it. Anything else you would say to Sarah? Yo, Sarah, if you're like lost and confused on what to do here, sign up for our newsletter. We have a lot of information there. We also have blog posts on there that walk you through what consolidating looks like. And if you want someone to do the work for you, that's exactly what we exist for. So we're here if you need us. I don't really plug our services like that, like I'm not a shill. I just, we do this because we want to empower you to get you what you need. So, but if you want someone to transfer that kind of emotional load of everything over to, that's exactly why people like me, people like, Adam Minsky, Joshua Cohen, Ed Boltz, these other student loan lawyers, why they exist. We're here to help you. So we look forward to helping you if you reach out to us. With that being said, I think that's it for now on this one, Emma. I think we tied the, tied the loop on this one, close it up. Yeah, I think All we right. did. Uh, awesome. Sarah, I hope you're watching. Anyone else who needs help with student loans, feel free to sign up for our newsletter, the link's down below. And with that being said, we'll see you next week. Peace.